What's up guys, The Snowman here, and I'm pretty excited because the final Grand Slam of the season, the US Open, is right around the corner and the draws are officially out for both the men and the women. Uh, today I'm going to be previewing the women's draw. If you haven't checked out my men's preview yet, uh, that is out. Please check that out if you have time. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at the women's draw for the US Open. Lots of big storylines, so uh, let's dive in. Alright, so if you've ever watched any of my draw previews before, uh, typically I start with the top of the bracket because, well, that makes the most sense. But today I'm going to shake things up. I'm going to start with the bottom half. So this is section four. We're going to work our way up. And the reason I'm doing that is because maybe you heard... We have a major popcorn blockbuster, uh, you know, all eyes on it first round matchup, and that is Serena Williams against Maria Sharapova. Two living legends will be going at it. Uh, their their all time rivalry, 19 and three in favor of Serena. They've been playing for a long time. Uh, Williams, though, typically when these two meet, she dominates because. She's just a little bit better at everything on the tennis court. Very similar playing styles, but Serena has the big edge. And uh, I remember getting up at 3 a.m. for their Aussie Open final, what, four years ago in 2015, thinking that could be the last major clash between these Titans. But I'm so happy that we get to see Serena versus Maria again on a huge stage. It's likely going to be on Arthur Ashe at nighttime, either uh, opening Monday night or Tuesday night for sure. For Serena, she's trying to make it back to the final and avenge that infamous defeat uh, last year at the hands of Naomi Osaka, where Serena kind of had that mini meltdown. Uh, Maria, she's also trying to have one more magical run. Hasn't had the consistency due to injuries the last couple of years. Basically, since her suspension, she's rarely been 100%. Uh, has a lot of has had a lot of problems with her shoulder, but she still had a few moments here and there. Did upset Simona Halep, the number two seed, back at the U.S. Open in 2017. Um, I'm not going to doubt Sharapova. She is one of 10 women with the career Grand Slam, has won all four majors. But on the other hand, Serena, she's on a mission. She's going to be the heavy favorite in this match. Uh, it's been almost 15 years since Sharapova has defeated Serena. I see a lot of theatrics. I, I predict a lot of entertainment. But it could end up being a short two sets unless Sharapova brings her A-plus game. Uh, in terms of both timing and power, she's going to need a Herculean effort to take down Williams who is uh, gunning for her fourth major final since coming back from giving birth. Uh, so I give the edge to Serena. Also, uh, in the bottom part of this section, you do have the uh, the number two seed, Ash Barty, and number 14, uh, Angie Kerber, both lurking. Barty, one of three players who can uh, leave New York as the number one player in the world. She's been on fire the last six months, winning the French Open. And then Angie Kerber hasn't been in the best form since uh, making the Indian Wells final back in March. Has dropped out of the top ten, uh, but as her Instagram states, she's in an empire state of mind. So I'm, uh, I'm pegging Kerber as a potential champion of this event as well. Looking at section three now, so we're still in the bottom half, but this is the uh, the other side of that bottom half, and we do have the three seed here, Karolina Pliskova, former finalist at the U.S. Open. She's been extremely consistent at the hard court slams over the last three years, so three Aussie Opens and three U.S. Opens. Uh, Pliskova has made at least the quarterfinals every single time, rarely throws in clunkers. And we also have the uh, the five seed here, Elena Svitolina. U.S. Open, the only Grand Slam she has not made the quarterfinals of. Uh, struggled this year with a, a knee injury for big parts, but a fantastic run to the semifinals in Wimbledon. Uh, we also have some pretty fun first-round matchups in this section. I like Joe Conta versus Daria Kazakina. That's classic uh, power versus variety in that matchup. Also an All-American affair, Sophia Kennan versus Coco Vandewey. Vandewey on the comeback trail. Uh, also has dealt with a lot of injuries of her own the past 18 months. And then we've got the two-time U.S. Open champion Venus Williams playing uh, the counterpuncher, Zhang Sai Sai. But for me, Madison Keys is actually the favorite to come out and make the semifinals from this section. Uh, Keys, she is the hot player right now, just picked up the biggest title of her career in Cincinnati, a Premier 5 event. Uh, she beat four Grand Slam champs to triumph there, including Garbina Muguruza, Simona Halep, Venus Williams, and Svetlana Kuznetsova in the final. And that was uh, that was coming off one of the most heartbreaking defeats you could imagine for Keys. Just a week earlier in Toronto, she squandered three match points, losing to Donna Vekic. So, you know, some players, they let adversity kind of send them into a, tail a tailspin, and then some use adversity to, uh, you know affect them in a positive way and I thought Madison's character really shone through last week in Cincinnati she's hot right now her power is firing on all cylinders and uh, I've got pretty high hopes for her this tournament 
All right, so we're working our way up in the draw now into the top half, and this is section two. Simona Halep here, the uh, four seed, the reigning Wimbledon champion, who's having another extremely consistent season. Uh, Petra Kvitova, the sixth seed, has been squandered by a, an elbow injury this year, so I don't think Halep's going to be too worried about Kvitova, but three other huge hardcourt threats in this section. Uh, number 19, you see Caroline Wozniacki, former U.S. Open finalist, uh, Aussie Open champ from 2018. Number 11, Sloane Stevens. Stevens uh, back with Kamau Murray, her former coach. Uh, I have no idea why they split apart, but Murray was the coach that she won the uh, the U.S. Open two years ago with. So hopefully Sloane is in a better state of mind. She's had a, a whirlwind kind of, you know, last year or so. Uh, also getting engaged to uh, soccer star Josie Altidore. So Sloane's been all over the map, but I expect Kamau being back in her camp to kind of give her a shot in the arm. And then I'm also looking at the 15 seed, Bianca Andreescu. Maybe you've heard of her. She uh, she only played one match since the end of March to August with a shoulder injury this year. But she shook off that rust mighty quickly in uh, Toronto. Won four of those six matches in Toronto in three sets to win the Rogers Cup. Her second huge title of the season uh, in addition to Indian Wells. And Andreescu is 7-0. and 7-0 against top 10 players in 2019. Uh, if she's healthy this whole year, I think she'd easily be in the top five of the rankings. A 38-4 and four overall record this season. 38-4. and four. So it's hard to imagine for me that there's not a be I mean, that there's a better player on hard courts right now when healthy than Bianca Andreescu. Um, she's so powerful off of both wings. So much variety. Probably the best drop shot in the game. Her forehand can just dictate in so many different ways. And I'm not saying she's going to win this U.S. Open because... We have to remember she's only 19 years old, and this is her first ever main draw U.S. Open. She has very little Grand Slam experience at this point in her career, but she is a contender for sure. Uh, please do not look past BB. Uh, if she meets Halep in the quarterfinals. That would be awesome. I would give Andre Eskew the slight edge, uh, but that, that'd be a lot of fun. Also, one other name to mention in this uh, section two of the top half, Svetlana Kuznetsova just made the final in Cincinnati, and of course, she is a, a former U.S. Open champion herself back in 2004. Finally then to the top of the bracket and uh, section one, my apologies uh, to Naomi Osaka for waiting so long to get to her, but she is the number one player in the world. That could change though in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, we know 12 months ago, she really became a household name when she defeated Serena Williams in the final to win her first major, then won the Australian Open, but she hasn't been that consistent uh, this season. Could lose the number one ranking if she fails to defend the title. Uh, both Barty and Pliskova are right behind her in terms of total points. So all three ladies have a great shot to leave New York as the number one player. Uh, Osaka did have to retire in Cincinnati with a knee injury, uh, but she says she's feeling fine. I really want to see Osaka play the 13 seed here, Belinda Bencic, in the fourth round. Bencic, uh, the Swiss player, 2-0 against Osaka this year, and uh, that would pit the smooth all-court game of Bencic against the power and the precision of Osaka. It would be a great matchup to watch. Uh, we also see the seven seed Kiki Burtons here. Great first round matchup. Number nine, Arena Sabalenka against another Belarusian, uh, Vika Azarenka. And the two Belarusians have played doubles together. They know each other very well. It'd be another tough draw for, uh, for Vika. She's had some tough breaks this year, but she's going to have a shot. Wants to throw off that timing and rhythm of the, uh, the huge ground strokes of Sabalenka. She's going to have any chance over there. And then uh, I'd be hard pressed to leave out Coco Goff, who really just took the Wimbledon headlines by Storm, the 15-year-old from Delray Beach. Coco went through qualifying at Wimbledon, won all three of those matches, and then won three more in the main draw, beat Venus Williams in the first round uh, until she bowed out in the round of 16 to the eventual champ Halep. But Coco Goff is a bona fide future number one player in the world, a, a future Grand Slam champion for sure. Already so strong and physically imposing. Uh, solid serve, very impressive backhand, and... The thing that's most impressive about her for me is like she stands next to these other players and it looks like she belongs. Still has so much growing to do, obviously, uh, both physically, mentally, and, and skill-wise in, in the game of tennis. But golf is on the right track. And, um, you know, hopefully she will bless us with another great run here. But uh, I think all eyes are going to be on her. It's, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun to watch. All right, so those are the major headlines. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know who you think will do well at this U.S. Open. Check out my men's preview as well if you haven't done that already. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. Give me a thumbs up. And thank you so much. Cheers.